What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create a building that has a whole bunch of different repeating exterior columns using some extensions inside of SketchUp. Um, if you're looking for information on more great SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my SketchUp extensions guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at a building that's actually over in Luxembourg. Um, it's uh, basically the Philharmonic building over there. And uh, you can take a look at this building, and this is the Visit Luxembourg website. You can see how this building has a bunch of different like exterior columns on it, as well as some exterior curtain wall. And I'm going to focus mostly on that. So I'm not going to, we're, we're not going to make this like, 100% exactly the same as this building, but more I want to focus on the concept of how you can create all of these different columns really quickly inside of SketchUp using extensions. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I've downloaded this image. Um, I've downloaded this image from Placemaker, which gives me slightly better um, imagery in here. So I've got more detailed imagery in here just so I can kind of see what the footprint of this building looks like or in this case more what the roof of the building looks like. Um, you could also use the map data in here. All I'm really using this for is just to get an idea of how outward this building should um, or how far out the outline of this building should go. So I'm just using this to kind of rough out the way that this building is going to look basically. And so I'm just going to draw an arc that kind of matches up with this curve. And uh, we're just going to get close for the sake of this example. And I'm just going to draw a couple different arcs using the arc tool, kind of like this. So we'll go maybe do about here. and then maybe around here. So that'll get us pretty close. That's pretty much what we're looking for in this case. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset this in a little bit because this roof has a fair amount of, um, this roof has a fair amount of overhang on it. So we're gonna have to offset this in and maybe I'll go even a little bit further um, just in order to, just in order to get the actual footprint of the building and then the columns are gonna go inside of this space right here. And so what we're gonna do when we do this is we're going to offset or we're gonna draw our columns in here and then we're gonna use the extension path copy in order to create copies along this path right here. And so the first thing we're gonna do with these segments is we need to weld them together because we're gonna use the extension path copy in order to create um, a copy of this along a path. And we can try to do all of these. I'm not 100% sure if that's gonna work, but we can give it a shot. So weld is an extension that's gonna take, there we go. Weld is an extension that's gonna take a curve like this one and it's gonna, or a series of curves and it's gonna weld them into an uninterrupted line. So now as far as SketchUp is concerned, this is one long curve rather than a bunch of different segments. That means the extension path copy will be able to recognize that. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw our first column. So we're gonna take this column and we're gonna draw, and I'm gonna assume it has a radius of maybe like three inches or something like that. And I'm gonna draw that off of this just a little bit, maybe like two feet or something like that, um, just so that it's not actually intersecting with this line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a circle with a three inch radius. So that gives it a six inch diameter. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that a component. And we're just gonna call this exterior column. So now we have a column item that we can copy along this path using the extension path copy. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select our path and our object, and we're gonna go up to extensions, and we're gonna use the extension path copy. And I will link to that in the notes down below. That's gonna allow us to create a copy of our object along this path. And so when I click on this, you can see what this is doing is this is creating a copy of this object all the way along this path. And I can go ahead and I can set the distance between these by typing in a value. So if I type in a value like five feet or something like that, you can see how that's gonna create more copies than had I come in here and created this um, and typed in a value of 10 feet. So these are gonna be placed at a five foot spacing along this path. And one thing about this that you're probably gonna to wanna to note is right now these objects are being placed 
along this path based on the object axis. So all of these objects are getting placed based on this axis right here. Well, the problem with that is when we do that, um, these don't get centered on that line. And so what we need to do is we need to go inside of one of these objects. So in this case, this one, and we need to move it outward of our wall. And you can see how because these are all copies of the same component, I can come in here and I can take one of these and I can move it outward along this green axis. So you can see how I can move this in this direction so these are gonna be outboard of this wall. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move these, maybe we'll call it, we'll call it 12 inches for right now and we're gonna hit, and we're gonna click outside of this object. And you can see how because these are all copies of the same component, I was able to come in here and move this really easily. And so now I could come in here and I could push pull all of these up to whatever the height of this uh, shape is going to be. So let's say this is like 30 feet high. I could push pull these up another 30 feet. So you can see how it's really easy to create all of these objects along here along this path using this extension. And if you wanted this to be lined up right with this corner right here, um, you might have to maybe do each one of these edges individually to get that to line up a little bit better. For the sake of this example, I'm not really too worried about that right now. But now what I wanna do is if you look at actual pictures of this building, what you're gonna notice is there's actually multiple different columns um, at each location. And so actually, um, now that I think about it, you're probably gonna want one of these inside and then two of these outside um, because that's kind of what the pictures look like is happening in general. Um, so the way that you could do that is we've already got each component created in this model. Well now, if I was to take this, I could actually use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy maybe another three feet outside of this object. And you can see how, again, because these are already components, I'm able to come in here and I'm, gonna, I'm able to make a copy outside or in the external direction. And that copy gets created all the way along here. And then I could also do the same thing where I go inside this component and triple click. And then I could make another copy To the inside so that I would have these internal posts as well. So you can see how I'm able to create the copies of these objects really quickly. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to create our curtain wall or our glazing. And so probably the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull this up this face on the inside up until it's about the same height as the posts on the exterior. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to have a face in here that I can then use an extension in order to create our glazing. So what I'm gonna do is probably, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my outliner and I'm gonna take all these copies of these columns and I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna put them in a group and I'm gonna hide them because I don't need them right at the moment. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use an extension called Lattice Maker in order to come in here and create our actual curtain wall glazing on the inside of this. And so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the hidden geometry in here. So if you go to View, Hidden Geometry, and maybe what I need to do is take these columns and put them on a layer so that they're not showing up and getting in the way. So we'll just create a layer called Columns. We'll put the columns on that layer and I'll go ahead and unhide them, but then I'll turn the columns layer off. That way they're not in our way anymore. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna split this up into a number of different uh, faces so that we can use the extension Lattice Maker in order to make our glazing in here. And so the best way to do this is gonna be just to double click on this roof and then do a shift click to deselect the face. And what I need to do is I need to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this edge or multiple copies of this edge through here because that's what we're gonna use with Lattice Maker in order to make our glass. So I'm just gonna select this whole edge and I'm gonna use the Move tool in Copy Mode. So select this edge, tap the M key, click on this edge, and tap the Control key to make a copy right here. And we're just gonna click at the bottom of this face. And then when I do this, I'm gonna type in divided by and five. 
and hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create five equally spaced copies between this first edge and this edge right here. So what this did is this broke this up into individual faces just like this. So now what we can do is with hidden geometry selected or hidden geometry turned on, we can come in here and we can select this whole object and we can use an extension called Lattice Maker in order to make glass in here. So I've got this all selected. I'm just gonna go up into my extensions and I will link to Lattice Maker in the notes down below. But what this is gonna do is that's gonna allow us to create a lattice using all of these faces that we have selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. What this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and for each one of these, it's gonna offset it inward a little bit and then it's gonna push pull it backward and create a face. So what we're able to do is we're able to create a curtain wall along this really easily. And then if I turn my columns back on and I go to view hidden geometry and turn that hidden geometry off, you can see how we've got a really nice curtain wall in here. And one thing I wanna point out, it's kind of getting a little bit advanced at this point, but if you need this curtain wall to have a certain, um, if you need this curtain wall to have a certain number of segments in your glass or something like that. That's something where when you initially set up your curve, you need to make sure you set up your curve so that each segment is the width that you'd like um, so that your curtain wall kind of looks the way that you want it to look. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this roof piece, I'm gonna double click in order to select this face and I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this up at roof level. And so when I create this copy, you can see how what this does is this allows me to take this face and move it up in order to start making my roof. And so once I've created the copy of the roof, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna make it a group because we're gonna come in here and we're gonna erase some stuff out. We don't accidentally wanna erase out the inside of this uh, object right here. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna push pull it up just a bit. like we'll call it two feet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase out this edge in the middle here to get rid of all that additional geometry that's just kind of sitting in there because we want this to be an actual thickened shape. And in hindsight, I probably could have erased this out before I started, but this will work just fine too. So I've got my roof like this. Well, if you look at images of this roof, it kind of moves outward a little bit. So we're gonna use the scale tool. So just tap the S key and scale that out. And then we're gonna push pull it up a little bit more. And then we're gonna double click to select this face again. And I'm gonna scale it out again just by holding the control key. And you kind of need to look at the way that this looks in order to make sure you get kind of a smooth curve in here, but then you could push pull it up and down just a little bit more. So what that does is that gives you a fairly smooth curve in here. And uh, if you feel like this is maybe too tall or something like that, after you've done this, you can select it and use the scale tool to kind of scale it down a little bit in order to get more of a smoother look in here. But now if I go in and I unhide my columns and I'm gonna turn shaded with textures back on, you can see how I was able to get this building in here with both my curtain wall, my columns, and my roof really easily using these extensions. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I know I went a little bit fast, so if, if you have questions about anything that I did, leave a comment below, let me know, I'll see if I can help you out. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.